Hello everyone, welcome back on my YouTube channel. Today I want to show you another game of mine against one of the strongest female chess players from India. And this is Harika Dronavali. She is a grandmaster. Her peak rating was 2543. And she is in fact three times bronze medalist of the Women's World chess championship and of course she has achieved a lot of titles uh, but besides chess she's also a very good friend of mine i know her quite well and i know her chess style because i have commentated so many games of harika that i know she's super sharp she's very creative and she's very good at the calculations so when i played against her i was taking it as a chance and i was like okay i'll try my best to play against her so let's now take a look at the game this game has been played in 2023 at the fide rapid team chess championship i'm with white pieces and i went 1d4 she responded with g6 and here we play this moves which lead us to the king's indian which is very sharp opening and that suits actually her style quite well well, she played knight to c6 and here the idea is that she wants to play bishop to g4 to pin the knight and when i play d5 she wants to jump the knight on d4 in the center and i just don't like that so at this point i decided to come up with some idea and i found a really nice move bishop to g5 i'm attacking the queen and if you cover this pin with the knight on e7 or f6 let's say knight to e6 i play knight to d5 and I am actually going for d square. Let's say h6, I will play bishop to f6, force you to take this. I'll take with the knight. There is a check. You have to uh, lose the right to castle. And this is a perfect third of a game. So instead of this, she decides to play f6 instead to kick my bishop back. But at this point, I love my position because f6 just locked the bishop on g7. And this is not a good situation for black she went for bishop g4 i went na d4 i went d5 here and normally you would play knight to d4 but as the pawn is on f6 this bishop is not supporting this diagonal so she had to play knight to e7 and this knight actually steps on the square of the other knight so they have a bit of conflict i played bishop to uh, e2 usually this knight from g8 goes on f6 but now there is a pawn on f6 and that's not possible so she plays knight to h6 so she plays knight to h6 and her idea is to play knight f7 castle and at some point to play f5 well i decided to play h3 and after this trade uh, there was a moment when i thought that okay even if she plays f5 and f4 she is not having a light square bishop on this diagonal and after castle on the short side i will not have any problems whatsoever because in a typical king's indian position when black starts the uh, pawn attack on the king side then knights are getting activated and then the final blow is the bishop sacrifice and the bishop is gone so there will be no final stage in this game and after that moment, I was like, okay, okay, I'm having a better position now. So, castle happened, bishop went on e2, and after castle, and after castle, black played f5. So, black is doing what's... So, after castle, black played f5. So, black is doing what is the most natural here to attack the king side with the pawns f4, g5, h5, g4 and so on and so on. Here my plan is to hold on the king side, obviously not trading the dark square bishops because then I'll have a lot of weaknesses on the dark squares. And my plan is to play before c5, trade some pawns here, open up the files and just activate all my pieces which are directing to the queen side that's a wrong arrow the bishop goes on this way and i will just get here very very good position on the queen side so she decided to uh bring more pieces on the king side and now the queen gets into the game but to be honest i was not scared but to be honest i was not scared at all because 
I knew that she needed a light square bishop to open up the position. Without that, it is not possible to have a strong attack on the king side. So I just played here bishop to d3 to hit the pawn on f5. She played knight to h6 and these three pieces are somehow packed together and they are taking each other's squares. So here I came up with the idea, how about I trap the bishop? So for the moment I really cannot trap this bishop because this goes here and if I play queen to e2 this is so obvious move right I want to play in somehow then g3 which is not possible and when I was through this process to calculating I just find out really nice move here and this is actually h4 I'm kicking the queen away and when queen goes on h5 now I can actually drop this now I can actually drop this bishop with g3 I played g3 here and you will see the engine bar drops down here. Instead of this, I had a better move um, and this move was in fact knight to e2. I have not seen this move uh, because I wanted to win the piece so much. The idea of this move is that bishop is not going any anywhere and whatever you do here, let's just pass the move. I don't know, I can make any move. Now I will take this bishop and I will activate my dark square bishop on this diagonal and I made the wrong move obviously this rook should not go on g8 now the king has no square to go but even if the king goes there white is just having a monster bishop on this diagonal and it will be very serious threats uh, for, for black and obviously it's going to be so difficult to survive even after knight to e5 i'll trade the pawns and activate the queen on c7 it's a lot of uh crazy things that can happen to black so um there was obviously the better but um we are greedy people we see the bishop is trapped we go for it right i played g3 i was thinking that I'm winning but she played g5 now very strong move and when I captured she captured with the pawn and suddenly she got some counterplay rook to g8 this rook can get activated knight g4 some sort of sacrifices but I already have an extra piece so she has to be a little bit careful I played queen to e2 as the pawn on f3 was hanging and after knight to g5 this is a very strong move uh, well, the thing is that if I take here, she will play rook to g8 and she takes this pawn and I'm struggling with this king and here the best move suggested by engine. That's why the engine bar stands in the middle and um, says that it's fine here for white. The move is bishop to g3, which is so difficult to spot. So the idea is that after bishop... So the idea is that after rook g5, you play king to f2 and you are on run with the king and somehow you are fine in this position but so difficult to make this kind of decisions and um, that's why I just decided after knight g5 to ignore this knight here and play it here bishop to e1 I want to open up the second rank for my queen uh, and also the pawn on f3 is not hanging so after rook to g8 now knight e4 is a serious threat knight uh, f3 is a serious threat knight h3 is another threat so i have to move my king aside and she played rook to g7 she wants to double the uh, rooks on g file and this is the moment when i actually converted a lot of time uh from my clock and this is a rapid uh game so it was 15 minutes plus 10 seconds i really had not had that much of time and I started to panic here at this point I was like oh no am I losing this one because um at the very beginning of the game I knew that there was no attack and just because I took the bishop from her I gave her some chances uh, and I did not hide this engine with me <laughs> which says that I'm completely winning here but when you play over the board uh, split or rapid games you are somehow not giving a proper evaluation so I played here not the greatest move I played rook to g1 but this is such a logical move right I also want to fight on the open g file but instead of this I could just take this pawn here on f5 and then try to hold this position so um, the engine says there is nothing wrong with your position after rook to g8 you play f6 you attack this bishop then you get this knight here and you are just 
fine. In fact, you are winning. But yeah, I was so much focused on the threats that my opponent was creating that I did not really thought what is best for me. So anyway, rook to g1 happened. Um, this is still a fine move. After rook to g8, uh, I played bishop to f2. It's not a fine move. And you can see that I'm losing on a spot. And when I made this move, I actually thought here several minutes. Uh, I just couldn't find any move uh, and went for this one. But I saw this very fancy move. So let's, let's take a look at this. So instead of what she played, she could actually take this pawn here which is a great move. I had now to take the rook. And at this point, uh, when I take the pawn on f5, I'm I'm sort of stuck here. I can't make the move, right? So she's actually uh, planning here to play queen to g4 and queen to h3 or queen to g2 checkmate. So I don't have much of the options here. I cannot move my rook away uh, uh, because after rook to g1, there is actually just take, take, and uh, queen h4 or queen to g4, those two moves are just winning here in this position. So um, I'm sort of like running out of the moves. And let's say I take here the pawn. The move that I saw that I was so proud, but it was not my move, is here a brilliant move. So guys, uh, if you want to find this idea and this move here, pause the video and give it a try. Black is winning uh, and actually checkmating in few moves. There are two good moves. And go ahead, you have actually very good chances to find one of these two moves. You can just pause the video and then come back later on to watch it. Well, um, if you here suggested that Black's move is rook to g2, <laughs> you're right. So this is absolutely killing move. Uh, rook sacrifice, the idea is rook h2 checkmate in one move, so white takes this rook, and now you play queen to g4 check, white has two moves, king to f1 or king to h1, doesn't really matter, you are checkmating next move, and that's a game over. So when I played bishop to f2 here in this point, I saw this, but I couldn't take my bishop back, <laughs> and I couldn't make any other move because basically I haven't seen any other move there. So I didn't know what to do. Another thing um, uh, that black could also play here in this line, rook g2 is the one move and another move maybe you were thought, maybe you were thinking about this move, queen to g4 is also game over for black. It's also game over for white because queen g2 or queen to h3 is a checkmate in the next move so this is just very bad position i'm actually quite surprised that she did not play it actually she thought here quite some times several minutes actually and i thought that okay she sees a checkmate and suddenly she plays knight to h3 and my heart starts to beat so fast and so loud that i could hear it and i'm like this is the second chance for me I can survive in this game, but I'm still struggling, right? It's too many pieces that are on the board and attacking my king. So I played rook to g7, trying to trade some of the pieces. Rook to f1 to guard this pawn because I want to play bishop g1 next move to open up my queen here. So she goes now take, take, and queen to h4. If I take here with the queen, uh, black would play rook to g3 and this pawn is still hanging so there is no much of the uh, issues with that uh, so i went rook here and after this i just decided to cover and when i saw this idea rook g2 i'm like okay okay i'm surviving here after this check i play king to g1 um at this point i could just repeat the moves but hey i have extra bishop like why should I repeat? She has to make a draw now. And here in this position, she takes the rook. I take it back with the king. If I take with the queen, there is queen to e1. Let me make it on the board. Queen e1, and there is a check, and my knight here is hanging. So I had to take with the king. And I'm like, okay, am I winning here? And suddenly she makes knight to g4 move. And I'm like, oh, oh no, what's what's going on? I have no time, seconds on the clock, and I'm very confused. And I thought that after this and this, I don't know what to play, F3 is coming, and I have two extra pieces. 
uh, but somehow I got scared. If I play queen f2, there's queen h3 check and this bishop is hanging. Uh, if she gets one piece back, that's more than enough because she has three pawns for the piece. Uh, but the good move here by the help of engine is king to g1. And there's no f3 anymore if f3 happens queen f2. And you are basically just controlling everything. If g3 happens, then you block on the light squares. So And your next moves are knight to d1, knight to f2, and somehow you are standing still. So basically, this knight g4 is a total bluff. It's just a bluff. And I could just take this knight, but um, yeah. I got scared of it and then I saw this uh, line here which I thought I could go to draw and you know what after all what I have experienced in this game draw was fine result so I played king to g1 and obviously I'm threatening now to take this knight she played check I played queen to g2 I know that I'm blundering the knight on uh, c3 but actually I want to play bishop to f1 if you take this one I take this one and now I'm not afraid of th those pawns uh, but she has knight to e3 intermediate move and my queen is hanging this bishop is hanging and the knight is hanging as well and you might think that this is so bad position for me but this is the move that I spotted and I was actually very happy to go for this and after black takes the knight I have queen to h4 and this is my chance to actually go for a draw I have queen f6 or queen to d8 and in fact this has happened in the game uh, black's king cannot really hide and to be honest she did not even try to hide her king, um, did not even thought of moves like this because obviously she'll drop several pawns and maybe she doesn't want it to have uh, more dramas in this game and maybe she also had the same approach that we had enough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, in this at this point we repeated the position and the draw was agreed here. So guys, that was the game that I wanted to show to you. I think it was very entertaining one, a lot of ideas, sacrifices, a uh, sharp uh, game and also very nice final end with this uh, draw sequence. And I think also it's quite nice to know this kind of uh, patterns in the King's Indian uh, defense and some sort of ideas how to attack the uh, White's King. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed and we will meet each other in the next one. Bye!